the message is that we have a lot of issues in this country that we need to deal with. American pro football player Colin Kaepernick mounts an unusual protest against what he calls police brutality and racial injustice in the United States. Hello, I'm Arnold Naidu and this is The Heat. To be clear, protests for and against a host of issues is nothing new in the United States, but what is unusual is when athletes, while on the field, choose to make their views known. So when American pro football player Colin Kaepernick decided not to stand for the playing of his country's national anthem, it drew widespread attention and controversy. For more on the Kaepernick protest, we begin in our newsroom with CCTV's Jim Spellman. And Jim, what's at the root of all this? What does Colin Kaepernick hope to accomplish? On it, he wants to use his position as a high-profile professional football player to draw attention to what he calls the oppression of not only black people in the United States, but of the oppression felt by many ethnic minorities here in the U.S. Before most professional sports games in the U.S., the national anthem, that's a song known as the Star Spangled Banner, is played, and it's tradition that all players, coaches, and fans stand, sometimes put their hands over their hearts while looking at the American flag as the song plays. Instead, Kaepernick has sat on the bench or knelt while the song is played. We have a lot of people that are oppressed. Uh, we have a lot of people that aren't treated equally, aren't given equal opportunities. Uh, you know, police brutality is a huge thing that needs to be addressed. Some historians, by the way, interpret one of the verses of the Star Spangled Banner as a defense of slavery. It's not common for professional athletes to take overtly political stances, but there is some precedent for this. In 1968, at the Mexico City Olympics, two American athletes, John Carlos and Tommy Smith, raised their gloved fists as they were awarded medals. They were protesting the oppression of blacks around the world and in the U.S. In the 1960s, Muhammad Ali refused to fight in Vietnam in protest of what he saw as U.S. imperialism and the treatment of African Americans. He was banned from the ring. As a result, more recently, some professional basketball players wore t-shirts supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. In all these cases, the athletes have used their public profile to bring attention to oppressed people in the U.S. and around the world. In doing so, they have faced the risk of losing support from their fans. Often, they face the risk of losing a lot of money as well from endorsements, Anand? Right, and Jim, what's been the reaction so far? Well, one of the things Kaepernick has said he wants to do is start a conversation about these issues. He's certainly done that. Some of his fellow players have joined in the protests, either by kneeling during the anthem or raising their fists, echoing the Olympians from the 1960s. President Obama has expressed at least some support for Kaepernick. Uh, he's exercising his constitutional right to make a statement. I think there's a long history of sports figures doing so. I think he cares about uh, some real, legitimate issues that have to be talked about. But Obama says he's concerned about using the national anthem and the flag as a way to protest because this is a symbol that means so much to many Americans, especially military families. Reaction amongst Kaepernick's fans, fellow players, the media has been mixed as well. Uh, many people say they support his right to speak out, but they question his methods just like President Obama has. But Colin Kaepernick says he means no harm to military members, but look, clearly a lot of people are supporting him. His jersey Anand is now the league's top seller. Thanks, Jim. That's CCTV's Jim Spellman reporting from our newsroom. Well, there's much to talk about. Joining us here in Washington is David Steele. He's a writer for Sporting News and the co-author of Silent Gesture, the autobiography of former U.S. Olympian Tommy Smith. Also with us is radio talk show host and civil rights activist Joe Madison. And joining us from Mountain View, California is Harry Edwards. Back in 1968, he served as an advisor to U.S. Olympians John Carlos and Tommy Smith while writing his first book, The Revolt of the Black Athlete. He's currently Professor Emeritus of Sociology at the University of California at Berkeley. Gentlemen, thanks to all of you for joining us. Let's start Thank out you. with Harry Edwards uh, out at Mountain View, California. Uh, let's talk about Colin Kaepernick. This has generated quite a bit of controversy. He said, I'm not going to stand up to show pride in a flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color. Harry, no matter what one's opinion, has Kaepernick started a debate again that is long overdue? 
Oh, absolutely. And I, and I think that um, not only is it long overdue, but it is something that feeds directly into uh, the environment, the highly hyper uh, racial environment that we have in this country. Uh, going back to uh, some of the uh, efforts by the NBA, for example, around the Donald Sterling situation, most certainly the Miami Heat wearing hoodies in the wake of the murder of uh, uh, Trayvon Martin. Uh, then you uh, look at the uh, numbers of uh, black men and children who have been shot by police officers and have it caught on camera uh, right on up to this very day when the uh, National Collegiate Athletic Association has pulled seven tournaments out of North Carolina behind the transgender issue, which is another uh, a human rights issue in this country. So uh, Colin is uh, right in uh, where he is um, uh, uh, dealing with these issues straight up, and he's, uh, he, he's, he's not wrong for doing so. And as I said, Harry, he's uh, generated a lot of controversy. You're advising him. What are you telling him? Well, I think we... Uh, there. The, the difference between uh, a movement and a mob, uh, the, diff the bridge between um, uh, protest and progress is uh, follow through. So we're looking at uh, some other things that um, uh, will be done later on, uh, such as uh, a barbershop conversations where uh, athletes, him uh, among them, will uh, pay uh, barbershops to give free uh, haircuts to police officers and people from the community. I mean, it's very difficult to get animated and do a lot of hand flinging in one thing or another while somebody is uh, cutting your hair unless you want to get out of the chair looking like a clown. So they're going to have to uh, uh, talk to each other and uh, then to provide a brunch afterwards to carry on those conversations. So there are some things that are being planned down on the ground to expand the conversation and uh, I think along with all of the talk that's going on which he's been very successful at generating uh, this follow through will help cement some of the uh, effort that he's uh, tried to um, uh, uh, put in place. Joe, the protest is spreading. Other players uh, have joined these protests during the national anthem. They're raising their fists or kneeling down. Um, one would hope that there are consequences here that these protests lead to something. Question is, who are the protests aimed at right now? Well, the protests are aimed at all of us. I mean, uh, you know, as I sit here and, and, and it, almost in awe of Harry Edwards, I mean, the only correction I'd make in his uh, introduction is he is everybody's professor. Right. He, he was my professor uh, in 1968 because what he did resonated. And, and what people have to understand, this is not just resonating in the United States, but it's resonating globally. Uh, I had the opportunity uh, to interview uh, John Carlos, and one of the mm -hmm. things that he said, this was not just about the United States, I think uh, Professor Edwards would agree with this, this was a global uh, protest. The, 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 and understand what's happening. Just the other day, you had a high school football team that decided to take a knee uh, during the playing of the national anthem. And a pastor who doubles as an announcer at this high school game said anybody that doesn't uh, respect the, uh, the national anthem should go over to the side and be shot by the military. The reality is that it's, it's speaking nationally, globally, uh, and the other reality is, and I heard James, I, I read something James Baldwin once said, and that is, politically, the majority is usually wrong. It's the minority that usually is right and makes the changes that end up changing our society and our, and our culture. And, and another great professor, uh, Dr. Ron Walters, uh, was once asked, what is the difference between a moment and a movement? What I appreciate about what Kaepernick has done is that he didn't have just a moment. He now has started a movement. And what everyone knows who has ever been part of a movement, the difference is, as Dr. Ron, the late Dr. Ron Walters said, the difference is sacrifice. Movements require sacrifice. David, you co-authored the book Silent Gesture about Tommy Smith, who, with John Carlos, uh, staged that protest at the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City. Uh, that was 48 years ago. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we're fair to say that very little progress has been made in 48 years. We still see the same protests. It's, it is uh, 
pretty remarkable that not only are the same problems uh, present, but uh, the athletes are using the same symbolism, which says a lot about the power of that, uh, of that protest. Right. And it says a lot about, obviously, the, uh, Dr., uh, Dr. Edwards as well and what he put together in, in advance of those, uh, of, of those Olympic Games, understanding how powerful they would be. And now we know it's lasted more than a mm -hmm. half century. Mm -hmm. To see that uh, Colin Kaepernick began by, by sitting during the anthem, then he went on to kneeling, and now we saw this this past weekend. On a weekend of this magnitude, not only was the opening weekend of the biggest uh, sport in this country that has the global impact that it does, but also the anniversary of, uh, of September 11th, to see uh, so many athletes not just uh, uh, kneeling, but also raising their fists in the air. This happened after game after game after game after game. So these, I mean, they, you know, they literally were not born. Sometimes their parents weren't born back in 1968 when this happened. But the understanding of that gesture has carried on. It's been passed down to them. And it, uh, it resonates with them, and so they, they continue to use it. But yeah, it is, it's, it's pretty sobering to realize that they have, that, that athletes, or that everybody in the society uh, is still facing the exact same issues that uh, John Carlos and Tommy Smith were protesting against, that they were trying to galvanize a movement uh, uh, on, on the Olympic stage to make that change. And now here we are half a century later, and you know, another big, gigantic stage like the NFL. Uh, we're facing the exact same problems and getting almost the identical backlash to de from death threats to to uh, questions about their patriotism. Right. Do they love this country? Leave this country if you don't like it. That that whole thing, everything to steer away from ever discussing yeah. actually solving the problems that they're protesting against. People being called traitors. Absolutely. Harry, when we look at the uh, protests right now, um, do you get the sense that someone is listening? Of course they're listening. I mean, this is what all of the conversation is about. Um, and it's, it, what's really remarkable is that we're in the midst of a presidential election campaign, uh, which is unprecedented uh, in, the, in terms of the depths of um, uh, swinery and, and, and pure uh, pigism uh, that uh, has been uh, expressed, particularly by one side. And over all of that noise, you can still hear uh, uh, Kaepernick and uh, his uh, cohorts uh, making a statement about human rights in this country and some real issues that we should be looking at. While so many of our presidential candidates have been arguing about how big somebody's hand is, about some emails, about uh, of, 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 uh, you know foundations and one thing or another, uh, and 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 this is not to denigrate uh, you know both sides. That, that this is not an equivalency that's going on here. Uh, and and just for uh, for the record, so that people understand where I'm coming from, um, I, I don't care about Hillary Clinton's health records. I mean, I'm going to vote for her uh, largely because of the option. Uh, I don't care if they have to administer the oath of office to her while she's on life support. Uh, I think that we have to uh, be real about this. And the fact that Kaepernick and his uh, athlete cohorts can get a serious discussion going about issues of race and equality and justice and so forth over all of this swinery uh, and piggishness that's being expressed uh, about, sometimes about race, uh, is, is, is truly remarkable. I mean, when you, yeah. think, uh, when you think about that, let, let's just take one example about this whole flu thing. Now, look, the real issue should be the fact that 80% of Americans who are low income, who get sick, can't afford to get sick. Yeah. That really ought to be the, 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 the issue. And, and the thing that I so appreciate about these, these uh, athletes, they, you know, they're damned if they do, damned if they don't. If they don't get involved, we criticize them for being elitist. Right. When they do get involved, we're saying, oh, you know, you, you hear the other side saying, oh, I'm tired of these wealthy, uh, spoiled individuals who, you know, don't appreciate the country. What you really are seeing are individuals who we every day say, thank God they haven't forgotten from whence they came. Thank God that they're reaching behind. You know, what you just heard Professor Edwards say, and I don't know if anybody caught it, but he ought to be on most news shows because they're not just talking about buying jerseys, protesting, but he says, we're going to take this to the barbershop. Yeah. 
we're going to sit that now people are talking about a solution and and not just focusing on the quote unquote protest look protest out pain brings about protest protest is supposed to bring about a plan plan is supposed to bring about progress and that's where we have to take this and Joe what do you make of the backlash against uh, people like Kaepernick oh, I mean what's new I, I mean I, I, I look I made the mistake the other day of, of saying to a gentleman I've seen this movie before <laughs> he said to me I lived it <laughs> this is not new I mean, this is not new. The, I mean, the fact, the panel that you've put together, what, I mean, millennials have to understand. We've seen this. You know, when, 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 you, when you talk with the Tommy Smiths and the John Carlos and they tell you, look, we didn't have $13 at the time we made the protest, and they took that. They're getting ready to try to take $13 million from cabinet. All of them. David, uh, this protest now has been compared to the protest staged by Rosa Parks. Remember that in 1955 when she refused to give up her seat for a white passenger on a bus. That was a pivotal moment in the civil rights struggle. Are we seeing another pivotal moment now? It feels that way. And, and, and to, to piggyback on what uh, both Dr. Edwards and uh, Mr. Madison said yeah. uh, earlier, um, these are you know th these are these are issues that have been at, on, at the forefront. A discussion of black people and people of color in this country and by extension around the world constantly you know it, it, it defines our entire lives for the most part certainly in the last two years police brutality has been at the forefront because of everything you know that sort of spiraled out of Ferguson and then to Baltimore and then to so many other cities since then and since we brought up now the presidential elections how many times when you think about it has that been on the forefront of what they've spoken about, but there's been all these other issues that are bounced around, and you know there are just talking, you know, talk, talking points and sound bites that are being thrown around that have nothing to do with anything being fixed. But now, here we, we just had a clip of the president talking about it, uh, and now the, the the two presidential candidates they're going they're going to get to the point where they're going to be forced to comment on this. Trump has already said something you know, very Trumpian about it. You know, but this is something that is going to get into the minds of the people who we are choosing to lead us, you know, for the next four years very soon. And it's all and, because of a groundswell that began from a football player in a, in a sport that supposedly is a game that is supposed right. to be, you know, yeah. no one's supposed to care about that much. It's not supposed to be that serious. But here we are. They brought something to the forefront that should have been there all along. Harry Edwards, go ahead. And, and this... And from the outset, this was this was something that uh, Kaepernick and I and I discussed. And and again, I don't want to I don't want to uh, act like there's an equivalency here in terms of the people who are being targeted. Um, you, uh, you know, Trump Trump couldn't couldn't lead me out of a burning porta potty with the door off the hinges. So I'm not I'm not I'm not looking to to target uh, uh, any change as far as he's concerned. But 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 we do expect. Uh, for candidates uh, all the way down the ballot to be discussing these issues when we have videotape of children being shot, videotape of men being shot in the back, videotape of men lying on their backs being shot, of women being pushed to the ground uh, and so forth by police officers. And this is not anti-police. We realize that just as blacks have conversations with their children about what to do uh, when uh, they encounter police officers, police officers' children are having a conversation with them every time they leave the house. Uh, take care of yourself. Be safe. We want you to come home tonight. This is not anti-police. We want the killing to stop. And that is the target of uh, everything that these football players are doing. And it's not just uh, Kaepernick. It's the uh, Seattle Seahawks, who I've worked mm -hmm. with. I've been mm -hmm. talking to the Miami. Miami Heat. I've been talking to the Miami Dolphins. We need to keep this in the forefront so it doesn't get lost in all of this swinishness that's going on for political conversation during a presidential campaign. And, and it cannot become, and it's quickly becoming that, the new normalcy. See, this is what, is, is, is what bothers me, that this becomes the, 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 what is supposedly normal. Yes. It is yeah. not normal. It is, and, and, you know, it's not normal. Let me add one other thing. Here you have a, a young man that walks into a church, kills nine people. Uh, he complies. He's alive. When black people comply, 
they, they're, they're dead. A young, a, a 57 year old man was shot in Florida because it, it, eating chicken wings and french fries That's in right. his backyard with a Swiss, rusty Swiss knife because he had a domestic dispute with his niece, so they shot him while eating chicken wings and french fries. A young man walks into a church, shoots and kills nine people. He says he's hungry. They take him to Burger King. This cannot be the new normalcy, and this is what this protest is doing, and that's why I said, it's, it, look, if Dr. Coretta Scott King once told me if she had a nickel for every black person who said they were at the March on Washington, she'd have been a millionaire. The reality, it's always the minority, but you're going to see this grow. And I will say this in, 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 con in conclusion to my remarks here, isn't it ironic? that these same quote-unquote patriots years ago would praise a young student in China who goes on top of a tank right. and yet criticize a young man who kneels at a football game. Uh, David, this is a sports field, or sports fields being used as a platform. Um, it certainly attracts attention, but is it very different from, say, demonstrations or protests that are being carried out by groups like Black Lives Matter? The NFL is, you literally can't even explain to anybody, even people who are within sports, how big the NFL is. I mean, there could not have been a bigger uh, venue for, for all this to take place. Even if this had taken place, say, in a baseball game or, or say, in the NBA, where the, the overwhelming majority of players are black. Um, because it's the NFL, um, it's sort of like what... Uh, Dr. Edwards and uh, Tommy Smith and John Carlos did back in 1968. The Olympics were that big on that biggest stage. The NFL is just, it's a monster. It is, you know, it is just, it just really, really bigfoots every other sport. It crosses over be well beyond sports, you know. The, the teams, the names, uh, even the pageantry uh, surrounding all this is just, go, just transcends uh, just the X's and O's and, you know, throwing passes and all that kind of stuff. So people are paying attention to this in ways that they would not do so, that they can easily tune out if they see, you know, something that happened uh, in, like you said, Ferguson or Cleveland right. or Miami or, 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 or Milwaukee or Baltimore or something like that. You know, you can, car you can compartmentalize it so easily. That's not my neighborhood. That's not where I live. That's not near me. But the NFL is everywhere. And that's one of the big reasons why everybody is, is, is paying attention to this. And, of course, people can connect it with all these places because certainly there's been a ton of incidents in, in the Bay Area uh, over the years. You know, every, every city has this long history of police violence. And it's bringing back those memories and it's bringing back the, the, um, the attention to those, to those kind of things. So it's, you know, there, there could not be a better place to have, to have chosen to do this and not, not a better group of athletes to choose to do this than NFL players right now. In this moment in time, if you had to pick a group of basically celebrities, NFL players are, are as big as it gets. You mentioned Rosa Parks, and yeah. I do want to make sure the, the audience around the world understands something. Mm -hmm. Do not, and, and I knew Rosa Parks, look, do not spread this myth that she sat down because her feet hurt. That was a lie. Right. Uh, that's a myth. She sat down, and it's ironic because she remembered and thought about Emmett Till. That's why she didn't get up. She said enough is enough. It had almost been a year after Emmett Till. Yeah. The, of the indignity of what happened to him and it continued with Rosa Parks. And isn't it ironic that this young man sits down because he thought about those who had been killed? By, by a law enforcement in this country. There's, a, there's an interesting parallel there. Yeah. There's a lot of budding yeah. heads against mythology and stories yeah. that, uh, that, that these players and these protesters are, uh, are fighting against. I mean, there's so much that's been pushed up against Colin Kaepernick about what are his reasons why he's doing this. Is he really oppressed? Uh, you know, he's too rich to do this, yeah. or, oh, he's about to lose his job, so he's trying to do X, Y, and Z. Uh, and they really didn't believe that this many players would support him. I think everyone you know, thought that he was going to almost be abandoned yeah. by, by his fellow players. You know, it, it's, a, it, it, it's, it's, in, it's interesting. Uh, I had a conversation with Kaepernick, and one of the things that he said was that he realized that the only reason that it was Mike Brown and Trayvon Martin and Oscar Grant rather than him is that he was not there.
Right. And uh, he also realizes the, the magnitude of the forum that he has. Uh, I did a, a talk uh, in front of about 200 junior high school and first year high school students, most of them aspiring athletes, um, at a, uh, uh, a venue about uh, six, seven months ago. And I, one of the things I asked them is, if you had a choice, you could be President Obama, you could be Steph Curry, uh, you could be LeBron James, you could be uh, Cam Newton. Uh, how many of you want to be President Obama? Three hands went up. Wow. They want to be Steph Curry. Right. They want to be LeBron James. They want to be Cam Newton. So that tells you about the size of the forum, the megaphone that That's these right. uh, mm -hmm. athletes have. And uh, in driving through Oakland, I was uh, junior high school was um, was getting out, and I looked in, in Oakland, which is really Raiders territory. I must have counted 12 or 13 uh, number seven jerseys, uh, Kaepernick jerseys. So uh, th th there's a tremendous amount uh, that can be accomplished here, especially when the athletes are talking about going beyond protest uh, to actually developing conversations by funding free haircuts and free uh, makeovers at salons where female police officers and women from the community can go in and sit and talk while they're getting that done, where uh, officers can go in and get haircuts with men from the community and literally have that conversation that everybody's been talking for years about uh, us uh, needing to have in American society. All right, Harry Edwards, I'm going to... You know, as you point out, these are very powerful voices. So I want you to take a listen to what John Carlos had to say about these protests. We need to come together and start to try and resolve these issues. He's bringing attention to them. And how did he bring attention to them? The same way we did 48 years ago in terms of giving America shock treatment. That's the only way they move, man, is when you shock them. And, uh, you know, for him to do what he did, it took a tremendous amount of courage for him to sit down against all odds and say someone needs to make a statement again. So, Professor Edwards, do we need that shock treatment again right now? We, we need it because there's so much noise out here and there's so much that's slipping through the cracks. Uh, we cannot afford, uh, in a society that is uh, increasingly uh, a brown and black and uh, all kinds of colors in between and beyond uh, to allow these issues of human rights for significant populations of people to simply become back burner, much less slip through the cracks. Somebody has to stand up and say, and oh yes, I understand the international issues. I understand what's going on in the Middle East. I understand the problems with the global economy. I understand the shifting from manufacturing to service industries and computers and so forth. But there's also, right. there are also these issues. And so uh, I think that it's necessary. I think that uh, okay. there could have been a better generation of athletes to do it. And we've got to end it there. Thanks to all of you for joining us. That's it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Arnon Naidoo in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us.